This is part three of the tutorial series on making a basic experiment in Tux. In part two, we configured our experimental design and defined the variables in our experiment. This section will focus on making our experiment execute some custom behavior. We will manipulate the Unity scene based on our independent variables that we defined in the last section. So in the last section, we edited this design file and added some variables in, but our experiment didn't do anything yet. So in order to control the Unity scene from within the BML Tux framework, we have to use what are called custom execution scripts. And those are scripts that were created for you when we used the script helper tool in the first section. And so we can see that there's three main ones. There's the block script, the experiment script, and the trial script. Most experiments will probably not have to touch the block script or the experiment script. The trial script is the only one that really needs to be modified. So let's open that up and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so it's opened up in Rider Editor here. Your version might have a lot of comments stuck in here that I added in to help new users, um, to help remind them where th the different code parts go. I've deleted those just because I'm going to be walking you through it. And so there's two main sections here. There's the constructor, which is this, and there's the main coroutine, which is this. And those are the two only required parts for a trial script. And so we can edit the main coroutine to add some custom behavior into our experiment. So let's start off simple here. Let's just ignore what this is doing for now. And we'll just say when you start each trial's coroutine, we're going to add some text to the console. So we'll do debug log. This is in main coroutine. So now every time that this function here gets called by BML Tux automatically, it's going to print this is in main coroutine. And then recall before we had to press the return key to move on to the next trial, that's, that's what this is doing. So let's go back to Unity, and we'll hit play. And we'll hit debug. And we can see there's our nine uh, trials that we had defined before. And it started running the first trial, and you can see it's printed out this is in main coroutine. And now it's going to expect us to hit enter. And we're on the next trial, and it's printing out this is main coroutine again. And so for every trial, it's running through that main coroutine method and executing all the code that's inside of it until the end. So if we go back to the um, editor here, we can see that this code inside main coroutine is being executed for each trial separately. And so as we move forward, this is going to be the main section where we define behavior for the experiment. Let's go back to Unity here. So to define behavior for the experiment, we need something in the Unity scene to manipulate. So let's create some simple objects just to test out this framework. So I'm going to create two capsules. I'm going to call one of them the stimulus, and the other one the matching object. So the stimulus will be the one that we're manipulating, and the match object will be the one that the participant is adjusting. So let's go to our scene view now, and we'll move these around a little bit. So we'll put the stimulus on the right. Okay. And then now we want to make some materials to change the colors of these. So I'm going to go create a material, and we'll call this blue 
we go. And then in the materials inspector here, I'm going to click on albedo and select a color for that and make it blue. And now I'm just going to duplicate that material twice and rename them for the different colors. Green material. Oops. And red material. And so we'll change the red to red. And the green. Okay, so let's just double check that these materials look right. Yep, so now we have a blue object. And we have a green object and a red object. Perfect. So let's just, I'm going to undo and go back to white. Let's just make a white one. That's kind of gray. Okay, perfect. So we have our materials and we have our objects, but now we have to tell UML Tux that these objects exist. So we have to create references to them. And for that, we're going to use this tutorial experiment runner game object that was created in the first section of this tutorial. So recall that this tutorial experiment runner has a script pre attached to it that we looked at in the very first section. So let's double click to open up that script. And we're going to add references to those objects. So we're going to add a public field for a game object, which we'll call stimulus. And then we'll have a public game object match object. And then we need a reference to those uh, three materials. So public material red public material blue, public material green. Okay, we'll save that and we'll go back to Unity. And now it'll do a quick load of that new script. And now when we click here, you can see there's now some fields that will accept the references to those objects. So we just drag them in. So we have the match object in the match object. We have the stimulus in the stimulus, and then we have to drag these materials in. Blue, green, and red. Great. So now we have a way to reference our objects within the BML Tux framework. So let's open up our trial script again. So to reference that experiment runner object in our trial script, we have to store it in a field. So it's a tutorial experiment runner object, which we'll call tutorial runner. And so this creates a field for it, but now we have to save it in that field. And so in the constructor here, you can see that it's being passed a generic experiment runner. But this is not the same as a tutorial experiment runner. So we have to let our trial script know that this runner is not actually generic. It's our customized experiment runner. So we'll say tutorial runner equals, and then we'll cast it into a tutorial experiment runner. And we'll cast this generic runner. Um, if you don't understand this casting here, um, that's a C sharp, a pretty basic C sharp uh, method. So just look that up on Google. But basically it's just saying that this generic runner is actually our custom type. 
Okay, so now we have a reference to our experiment runner that's storing all of the important references in our Unity scene. So now we can adjust those references. And so now what we could do is set in our co main coroutine, we could set the color of maybe the stimulus. So we could say tutorial runner dot stimulus. So I'm going to get the mesh from that. And I'm going to set the material to be equal to the blue material. So I'm getting the reference to our experiment runner that's storing our scene references. And remember, we created a, a public field in there that was called stimulus. And then I'm just getting the mesh from there and I'm setting the material of the mesh to blue, which is the material that we created before. And so now every trial is just gonna set our stimulus to be blue. Let's go check that that works. So I'm gonna hit play. And hit debug. And now if we look behind our experiment runner script here, we can see that one of them is blue. It's a little bit hidden. So now this interface here is blocking our, our game. And the reason for that is because we're only displaying things on one display. So this framework is meant to be on two displays so that the experimenter can see this display, whereas the participant can see the display behind. So let's adjust some settings quickly to make that happen. So we're going to exit play mode, and we have to adjust the GUI settings. So if we look at the start here on in our console, it can say setting UI to show on display one. Click here to highlight the settings file in project. So that means that we have it set up to display that interface over top of display one, which is usually where you're going to be showing participants things. So let's change that. So we're going to click there, and it's going to highlight this um, default settings here. GUI is just graphical user interface. And we're going to take this and we're going to copy it. So now we have our own GUI settings, which we'll rename to be custom GUI settings. And if we look in the inspector here, it, it shows target display. So we're going to switch that to display 2. And so now our main Unity scene will be displayed on display 1. And our interface for running experiments will be displayed on display 2. And so to view display 2, we can click on game here. So this is set to display 1. And we can create a new tab by right-clicking on it and go to Add Tab, Game. And then we can change the second tab to show Display 2. And right now, since there's no interface yet, it just says no cameras. And if you want, you can drag this and put it side by side or something like that. But just so you guys can see it in a big way, we'll keep it like this. OK, so now when we hit play mode, we'll actually see that nothing has changed. It's still blocking. And you can see nothing's on display 2 yet. And that's because we have to point our um, BML tux to our new custom settings file. So we go to the design file here, and we go down to show advanced settings. We scroll down. And see there's a field here for GUI settings. And we can just drag our custom settings now into that field. So I'll just open that up again. And take the custom GUI settings and drag them in here. And so now it's knowing that instead of using the default settings, it's going to use our custom settings. Great, so now when we load it up, 
you can see we're on display two and we're seeing our UI. And if we go back to display one, we see what the participant would be seeing. And so this is a much better setup because we can monitor what the experiment's doing from one monitor that's hidden from the participant and the participant can see uh, what they need to see. Great. Okay, let's go back to our script. So right now every trial is just going to be blue, but we want to adjust the trials based on what's been automatically generated by our design file. And so what we want to do is read in some data from the trial, what this trial is supposed to be, and then manipulate the scene based on that data. And so usually when we set up our trial, we do that in something called a pre-method. So I'm just going to type in the words override here, and the editor is smart enough to know which options there are. So you can see here there's a bunch of methods. There's pre-coroutine, pre-method, post-method. These are all things that I've defined in BML Tux. So we're going to overwrite the pre-method. And so this is just a setup method that's going to get called before each trial automatically. Okay, and we want to delete what's in here because we want to add our own custom behavior. And now in this pre-method, it's guaranteed to execute before the main method, the main coroutine. So we're going to do our setup in here. And we want to read in what each trial's color is supposed to be. And so each trial has this data object that it has access to that gives it access to the values of each variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to say string color string equals data. And so inside the data object, we're going to access something called color. And so now this is looking for the color variable inside the data object, and it's going to get the value of that. And we just have to remind it that we set up our color variable as a string. So we have to use this cast again called string. Oops. And so now it's saying get the color variable value from our data object for this trial. And remember, it's going to be a string. And we're going to store it in this variable called color string. And so now we have to set up an if statement to control the actual color of our stimulus object. So we're going to say if color string is equal to blue, we'll do something. Else if color string is equal to red, then we'll do something else. Else if color string equals green, we'll do something else. And then it's always a good idea in case you made a typo or you spelled something wrong in, when you were defining the variables, it's good to have some kind of error message here. So we're going to do a debug.log error and we're going to say um, invalid color given. So what this is doing here is it's getting this trial's color string, so which value it, it got, and then we're going to say if it's blue we're going to do something, if it's red we're going to do something, if it's green we're going to do something, and if we didn't recognize the value, if it wasn't one of these three options, we're going to throw an error. Okay, so now we're going to copy our code here. We're going to get rid of it from here because we don't want to do it every trial the same. We want to do it differently for each trial based on the value. So now if it's blue, we're going to set it to blue like we did before. If it's red, we're going to set it to red. And if it's green, we're going to set it to green. I'm going to save this. I'm going to head back to Unity, and let's play it. 
debug mode. Okay, so if we look at what trial we're on, it should be a red trial. So if we go over to display one, sure enough, it's red. And let's press return, and now it's on the next trial. And that trial is blue, and let's just make sure that's correct. And yes, the color for this trial should be blue, and it is blue. So now we're going to go and just loop through and make sure it keeps going through all the different colors. Perfect. Great, that's working great. So now to adjust the size, we're going to do something similar. So we're going to say float size equals, and now we have to remind it that it's a float data size variable. Okay, and now to adjust the size, we're going to say adjust to the tutorial runner stimulus object. It's transform dot local scale is going to be equal to size, size, size. So this is just scaling the stimulus object based on the value of the size variable. Remember that's going to be one, two, or three. So it's just going to scale it up by a factor of two or by three on the different trials. Let's save that and see if it worked. If you're not familiar with transform local scale and vector threes, um, do some simple tutorials in Unity and then come back to this tutorial. That, that's pretty basic stuff with Unity. All right, so let's try it out. So I'll go over here and we'll check the game. So this one should be size one, size one, size one, size two, size two, size two, size three, size three, size three. So they're stuck together a little bit, so I'm just going to sp spread them out a little more in our scene here. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Great, so now our script is doing something to our scene. So the final thing we want to do is to write our code so that it can measure variables. So usually we do that in a post method. So here we set up in the pre method and now we're going to kind of finish up the trial in the post method. So we're going to do override again post method. Okay, and now we're going to write something into our data object. So before we were reading from our data object, we were reading in the independent variables, but now we want to write to our dependent variables. So we want to say um, data, and we called it match size, I think. Let me just double check that that was the Spelling. Yep, match size equals, and we're going to make it equal something. And so we set the size by using the local scale. And so we want to check that their object that they're controlling is going to be similar in size. So what we're going to do is we're going to say match size is whatever they set their object to. So the matched object size. And we're just going to pick one of the coordinates because they're all going to be the same. So this is just saying the object that they're trying to match, what's its size, we're going to store that in the match size variable. And so now can run through the data. Okay, so see how the match size is all starting off in our missing value. 
But now as we run through the trials, it's getting updated. It's writing value to that. OK, but the size is not changing because the participant cannot control the size yet. So in the next section, we'll be focusing on accepting some user input and we'll be adding in some more advanced features like blocks and randomization.